In the world of business, some names resonate with power, innovation, and controversy. One such name is Lockheed Martin. But before we delve into the behemoth that is Lockheed Martin today, let's rewind to 1912. Two brothers, Alan and Malcolm Lockheed, embark on a journey to conquer the skies. With an investment of $4,000 from Max Mamluk, they kickstart their aviation venture, crafting the Model G and offering scenic flights over San Francisco. Yet, the post-World War I era brought financial turbulence, leading the company to closure. Allen ventures into real estate while Malcolm pioneers hydraulic brake systems for automobiles. In 1926, Allen Lockheed reunites with fellow aviation enthusiasts, John Northrop, Kenneth Kay, and Fred Keeler, forming the Lockheed Aircraft Company. Their designs, including the Vega and Electra, soar into the annals of aviation history. The Electra would later be piloted by Amelia Earhart on her ill-fated final flight. By 1928, sales eclipsed the million-dollar mark, but internal shifts and economic woes forced changes. In 1929, the majority shareholder, Fred Keeler, decides to sell the company to the Detroit Aircraft Corporation. Alan Lockheed, disheartened by this decision, chooses to depart from the company. However, fate takes a turn as the Great Depression hits, plunging Dacey into bankruptcy. Seizing an opportunity amidst adversity, Robert Gross, along with his brother Cortland and Walter Varney, step in to acquire the struggling company in 1932 for a mere $40,000. Interestingly, Alan Lockheed had considered purchasing the company for $50,000, but deemed the offer too low to be considered. Little did he know, this decision would shape the future of Lockheed in unforeseen ways. Enter Clarence Kelly Johnson, whose visionary leadership catapults Lockheed into military aviation excellence. In 1937, Lockheed introduces the Model 14 Super Electra, a revolutionary civilian aircraft and its bomber conversion, the Hudson. The British Royal Air Force promptly orders 200 units as tensions escalate across Europe. This pivotal moment not only solidifies Lockheed's presence in the aviation market, but also marks the beginning of their significant contributions to military aviation. In 1938, responding to a US government specification for an interceptor fighter plane, Lockheed, under the guidance of Kelly Johnson, develops the P-38 Lightning Fighter aircraft. This iconic aircraft quickly proves its worth, becoming one of the most versatile and formidable fighter planes of World War II. Lockheed's P-38 Lightning would go on to play a crucial role in shaping the outcome of the war. During World War II, Lockheed's production facilities become instrumental in the war effort, churning out over 19,000 aircraft to support Allied forces. Towards the end of World War II, as the German Luftwaffe introduces jet-powered fighter planes, the United States realizes the urgent need to harness this cutting-edge technology. In response, Lockheed's brilliant engineer Kelly Johnson is tasked with an ambitious mission – develop a jet-powered aircraft for the U.S. military within an astonishingly short time frame of 180 days. In a race against time, Johnson and his team, known as the Skunk Works, rise to the challenge. In just 143 days, they unveil a prototype jet named the Lulu Bell, which would later evolve into the P-80 Shooting Star. But it was the post-war era that truly defined Lockheed's trajectory. In 1953, amidst rising tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union, fear of a potential nuclear conflict looms large. To gather crucial intelligence on Soviet activities, the CIA commissions Lockheed to develop a groundbreaking reconnaissance aircraft the U-2 spy plane. Designed to fly at altitudes of 70,000 feet, the U-2 operates beyond the reach of conventional radar, providing unprecedented access to classified information deep within enemy territory. In 1954, Lockheed expands its scope into missile systems with the establishment of Lockheed Missiles and Space Company, LMSC, headquartered in Southern California. However, recognizing the need for advanced radar and computer technologies, Lockheed relocates its missile division to Stanford, California, becoming one of the pioneering tenants of Stanford's research park, now home to renowned companies such as Tesla, Hewlett-Packard and VMware. In 1956, Lockheed secures a pivotal contract for the development of the Polaris Submarine-Launched Ballistic Missile, SLBM, marking a significant milestone into the company's history. This contract is followed by the development of subsequent nuclear missile systems, including the Poseidon and Trident missiles. With these projects, Lockheed empowers the United States with the capability to launch nuclear missiles from the sea. 
Fast forward to May 1960, a turning point in aerial reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. The United States, having successfully utilized U-2 spy planes for years to monitor Soviet activities, faces a startling revelation. Despite flying at altitudes believed to be beyond the reach of Soviet radar, one of their U-2 planes suddenly goes dark during a mission over Soviet territory. Pilot Gary Powers is brought down by a surface-to-air missile. It's a chilling wake-up call. It turned out the Soviets could see the planes this whole time, they just didn't have any weapons that could reach 70,000 feet. This revelation prompts a critical reassessment of US reconnaissance capabilities. Lockheed, once again at the forefront of innovation, rises to the challenge. In May 1960, Lockheed unveils the SR-71 Blackbird, a marvel of engineering and design. Capable of flying at speeds exceeding 2,300 miles per hour, it can outrun missiles. Amidst the backdrop of escalating Cold War tensions and the need for covert surveillance capabilities, Lockheed embarks on a top-secret endeavor, the Corona Satellite Program. In August 1960, Lockheed launches the first Corona satellite into orbit, marking a significant milestone in reconnaissance technology. Operating under a veil of secrecy until its declassification in 1992, the Corona program revolutionizes intelligence gathering by providing unprecedented high-resolution imagery of strategic locations worldwide. This clandestine satellite network, developed by Lockheed, enables the United States to monitor adversary activities with unprecedented detail and accuracy, all while remaining undetected. In the early 1970s, Lockheed faced a cascade of challenges that threatened its stability and reputation. The iconic Blackbird program, which had long symbolized Lockheed's mastery of cutting-edge aerospace technology, came to an abrupt end as budgetary constraints and shifting defense priorities led to its cancellation. Additionally, Lockheed suffered a significant blow when it lost its fighter plane contract to General Dynamics, resulting in the development of the highly successful F-16 Fighting Falcon by its competitor, Moreover, the conclusion of the Vietnam War marked a turning point in American society. As war fatigue and disillusionment with military conflicts led to a decrease in defense spending and a re-evaluation of national priorities, as a major defense contractor, Lockheed found itself grappling with the implications of these changes, facing uncertainty about its future prospects and the viability of its existing projects. In a bid to diversify its business portfolio, Lockheed made a pivotal decision to re-enter the commercial aviation market with the development of the L-1011 TriStar. However, this ambitious endeavor proved to be a costly misstep for the company, culminating in staggering losses of $2.5 billion. Despite initial optimism surrounding the TriStar's potential to compete with industry rivals, production delays, cost overruns, and intense market competition led to financial turmoil for Lockheed. By 1971, Lockheed found itself teetering on the brink of bankruptcy, drowning in a sea of debt. In a desperate bid to stave off financial collapse, the US government extended a lifeline to Lockheed in the form of a $250 million loan, providing much needed relief and a chance for the company to regain its footing. However, Lockheed's troubles were far from over. In 1976, the company was embroiled in a high-profile bribery scandal that sent shockwaves through the defense industry and beyond. Revelations emerged that Lockheed had engaged in illicit practices, including the payment of bribes to government officials in order to secure lucrative contracts. This scandal not only tarnished Lockheed's reputation, but also triggered widespread public outcry and legal repercussions. In response to the escalating threat posed by sophisticated Soviet surface-to-air missiles, SAMs, during the Vietnam War, the United States embarked on a quest for stealth technology to enhance its aerial combat capabilities. This pursuit culminated in a groundbreaking achievement in 1981 with the maiden flight of the F-117 Nighthawk, a revolutionary stealth fighter aircraft developed by Lockheed. Distinguished by its unconventional angular design and advanced radar evading capabilities, the F-117 Nighthawk represented a paradigm shift in aerial warfare. Despite its seemingly peculiar appearance, the Nighthawk boasted a radar signature comparable to that of a small ball bearing rendering it virtually undetectable to enemy radar systems. The debut of the F-117 Nighthawk marked a resounding success for Lockheed, as demand for the stealth fighter soared. In a testament to its cutting-edge technology and combat prowess, Lockheed secured contracts to deliver 59 F-117 Nighthawks to the US military, each commanding a hefty price tag of $43 million. 
This lucrative venture generated an impressive $2.5 billion in revenue for Lockheed. With the Gulf War and Cold War over, a significant shift occurred in the landscape of defense contracting. Under Secretary of Defense William Perry delivered a sobering message to defense contractors, including Lockheed. The era of high-level defense spending was coming to an end, and consolidation within the industry was imperative. In 1993, amidst a shifting landscape in the defense industry, Lockheed made a strategic move to expand its capabilities by acquiring the fighter jet business of General Dynamics. This acquisition bolstered Lockheed's position as a leader in military aviation, further enhancing its portfolio of cutting-edge aircraft and technologies. Two years later, in 1995, Lockheed embarked on a historic merger with Martin Marietta, another prominent player in the aerospace and defense sector. This landmark consolidation brought together two industry giants to create Lockheed Martin, a powerhouse in the defense contracting world. In 1996, Lockheed Martin expanded its defense capabilities with the acquisition of the defense business from Laurel Corporation. This strategic move further solidified Lockheed Martin's position as a leading provider of advanced defense technologies and solutions. The following year, in 1997, Lockheed Martin pursued a merger with Northrop Grumman. However, this ambitious endeavor was thwarted by the Department of Justice, DOJ, which blocked the merger due to concerns about potential monopolistic control over the market. In 2001, Lockheed Martin made strategic divestments and acquisitions to optimize its business portfolio. The company sold its aerospace electronic systems business to BEE Systems for 1.67 billion, streamlining its operations and focusing on core competencies. Simultaneously, Lockheed Martin secured a monumental victory by winning the contract for the system development and demonstration phase of the Joint Strike Fighter program. This landmark program intended to replace a diverse fleet of existing aircraft for multiple nations, including the United States, United Kingdom and others, represented one of the largest defense contracts in history, with a projected program cost of $1.1 trillion. Today, Lockheed Martin stands as a global leader in aerospace and defense, boasting a market value exceeding $100 billion and employing over 120,000 skilled professionals across more than 340 facilities worldwide. As we look back on Lockheed Martin's remarkable journey, it's clear that their legacy of innovation, resilience and commitment to excellence continues to inspire. From conquering the skies to shaping the future of defense technology, Lockheed Martin stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of progress.